On today's episode, we talk about things that drive us crazy. We talk about eye parasites and bachelor parties gone wrong. We take the time to answer the questions you left for us on social media. And our review of Dr. Sleep, all coming up on the Segway Podcast. Hey, welcome to the Segway. The best thing to happen to you on a Thursday. That's right, recording live in LeBron's backyard. My furnace broke. Uh, did you get that fixed? <laughs> yeah, I did. It okay. got fixed like after we left the movie. Okay. But, oh my god. I forgot to ask about that. I'm a bad friend. That's okay. It was so fucking cold. It was 57 in my house. Yeah, that, I yeah. mean that is cold. It doesn't sound cold, but it is cold. I like okay, but like you're used to like 70, 69, 68. Yes. But Jesus Christ. Yeah, so but you got it done. Yeah, it got yeah. It got you got it. down on your hands and knees, you got some mm-hmm. elbow grease. When I tried looking at it, I was drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it like two in the morning? Yeah, I was like, um I got this. And I got it unscrewed, and that was about all I could do. Yeah. My Browns won this weekend. Yeah. It was stressful. The Browns tried to brown, but the Bills browned more than the Browns browned. And that's a fact. Um, today, the hearing, when you guys are listening to this episode, we're playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. The so, Browns are. Not you. The Browns are. Yeah, I guess I'm not. I'm, I'm just <laughs> as good as... Me and Jermaine Whitehead are just going to chill out, and, <laughs> and we're going to watch it. He's going to add us. <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> I say good. Yeah, so but that game's tonight, so that'll be exciting. We can and See, that's why the Denver loss really hurts, because we could have been 5-5 five and five if we'd beat Pittsburgh tonight. But, you know, we didn't, so it is what it is. I hope everybody had a good Veterans Day on Monday. Uh, for those of you that didn't have to either go to school or work, awesome. For those of you that did, like me, got paid, you know, so <laughs> whatever. But, yes, uh, so we, we did a social post, but I just want to say it again, you know. We we don't go overly political, and we definitely don't agree with a lot of politics stuff that's out there. But we still do recognize and uh, respect the service men and women yeah. of the United States Armed Forces and everybody that served. We respect your sacrifices. So yeah. thank you. I got family in the military right now. Yeah. Did you I text was... them Monday? No. Maybe uh, it's not too late to text them on Monday. Uh, we'll see what happens. I don't. Have... <laughs> <laughs> uh, one's a one's a cousin, like in law, like my cousin married him, uh, and two of them are just cousins. Okay. Um, goal update. I'm 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 hitting some more presents, which is good. Uh, do you have any presents that you you don't have to say on here because we don't know who listens. You know, we get millions of new listeners every day, every day, millions, <laughs> millions, and millions of new listeners. It's gonna be a second, like, you're um, of listeners. So you you might not want uh, everyone to know, but um, do you have a present that you're really excited about getting somebody uh, this year? No. <laughs> no, okay. I'm too caught up in the wedding, dude. See, uh, that that's you know that's 100 percent fair. On remember my my list thing on Christmas last year, my dad told me uh, that he misses the outer limits. So oh, literally yeah. on Christmas last year, I wrote that in my phone, and I just I just went to the exchange. Which shout out to the exchanges. I like, worked there. You did work there for like a, a blink. <laughs> I got fired for a while, for one second, but they're always fun because you never know what's going to be in there. Like movies, games, music, you never, I got a Rise Again signed autographed poster in here from the exchange, which is sick. But, um, I found two out, Outer Limits DVDs there. For so. some reason, it was like Outcast. Outcast. I, I know you're going to say Outcast, the no, band my, Outcast. My dad's not gay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Outcast is cool. <laughs> Your dad doesn't listen, right? No. <laughs> he doesn't have a device to listen to us on. If we somehow made it on the radio, <laughs> Ashtabula's radio, he might catch us. Do you have do you have any things you wanna? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, um, tell me about it. So, do you remember when we did uh, Ferocious Fears? Yep. We did get jellyfish pictures sent to me, and that was from Cedric. And I wanted to just say fuck you. So you know. Yep. Fuck you. <laughs> have you remember we were talking about Cora? Remember I sent you that message about Cora that you can go on and answer questions and stuff. Oh yeah, I thought, I thought it was like Cora. The Which we're on. Yeah. No. No. Every now and then I like to look up random things on there and just, and, and like, it, it's cool because it evolves with you. Like the more questions you read, it knows what topics you're searching. So it'll send more in your feed of what you've been reading. It's going to be all sports, isn't it? No, I haven't looked at no, it since you no. sent it to me. A lot of it's movie related, but, but somebody made a post. It was like, I, I, I typically do it to keep my head on straight. Like I look up a lot of like life hacks or things you didn't know about life or ways to make like life simpler or like great facts about your day. And one of them was like, watch comedy movies, don't watch horror movies. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, what are you trying to say? <laughs> and it was like, laughter is good and healthy, and comedy makes you laugh. Where horror movies increases your adrenaline, it makes you stress the whole time through, and it's not healthy. And I was just thinking about all the horror movies I watch, because it's my favorite genre. And I'm like, 
Maybe I'm killing myself. I mean, you don't sleep. So. It's probably not my lack. Yeah, it's probably not my <laughs> lack of sleep. It's probably my horror movies. That's why I always feel like shit. There could be a correlation. Nah. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Yeah, let's let's move on. Okay, we're bringing back this segment. This is called "Had It Up to Here." It's about things that grind our gears, and we're we're sick of it. And we're gonna let you know. That we're sick of it. Made famous by Peter Griffin of Family Guy. Yes. Grind yeah. my gears. Well, not that. Yeah. I'm That's not... why we could. I actually, when we were talking about it, I think we initially had Grind My Gears. Yeah. But then it, I think it's like a short joke to us kind of too, where it's like we've had it up to here, which isn't that yeah, bad. But exactly. Like minor inconveniences. So you want me to start with this? Yeah, you go first. Okay. I had a separate one, which didn't have much weight to it. And this is probably going to be a little rambly, but I'm just going to, I'm going to go into it. So this had it up to here. I've had it up to here with people, including me and people I know and everyone in the world. Not everyone in the world. I guess I get to that point. Overvaluing social media. Okay. So if you you want to break down life, think about it this way. What does it do for you? Like, what does it do for me? Like Social media? Anything. Like, why do you get a job? Because it helps you provide for you and your family. So what's the point? Why do you eat salads? Because you're trying to lose weight. Why do you eat pizza? Because it tastes really good. And, you know, maybe some people get satisfaction out of their meals. If you have a really long day at work, sometimes the only thing mentally you're looking forward to is that cheesesteak. So even though it's not healthy, what does it do for you? It brings you happiness. Is it the best way to deal with things? You know, that's, that's up to you. So when you think about social media, for us, what does social media do for us? Well, it gets us out there. We're a podcast. If, if we didn't do any per- social media promotion, we wouldn't go anywhere. So this is kind of like a new world for me because I don't post on social media personally. Like, I don't even have a personal Instagram. I don't have one. Uh, my Twitter is, I use Twitter uh, only for uh, sports. That's, for me, in my mind, why, what, what does Twitter do for you, Tyler? Sports updates. Before I look on the news, before I get an update on my phone... I will get a tweet from like Adam Schefter or Ian uh, Rappaport. Somebody's going to have like Bill's player got cut. This Browns player said this. You can literally see professional players tweet in real time. Like that's what it does for me. But then I, because I've been on it more for us, for this podcast, I've been going down trails of being on it more than I typically would. Like typically I get the sports update and I'm out off the app. Instagram, I was never on until the podcast. And Facebook, I think, is still, it's like newspaper for your friends and family. It's like finding out what's going on with your friends and family. I'm kind of excluding Facebook from this, but I think to a certain extent, it does kind of drip into what I'm saying. But there are people that are more focused on their social media profile and how many likes they're getting and how many followers they're getting for themselves personally. And it just seems really unhealthy. And that ties into, I think, people constantly being on their phones. Like for me personally, when if I'm at a sporting event, if I'm at a game, if I'm at a musical, if I'm at a theater, if I'm at a movie, I'm not thinking I need to get a picture of this. So there's going to be, it doesn't matter. I'll be louder than the sirens. Okay. If So it, it takes me back when two things pisses me off when somebody's on their phone while you're at a dinner social thing, like checking your phone. Yeah, I get it. But like constantly being on it pisses me off. And it, it takes me back when as soon as somebody gets somewhere to an event, they take up like, oh, I got to snap this or I got to. And it's like, why? Or like being at a concert, I got to get a video of this, like one song, maybe one chorus. Sure. Just to re- remember. But people that are constantly on their phones, constantly recording, it's like taking people out of the moment. And have you noticed people that tweet? How often are you on Twitter? Uh, Never. OK, good. I, good. I hate Twitter. Good. There are people that steal tweets just and it's becoming a thing now where people make fun of people that do this, but they'll steal a tweet that is like hip lingo wise. And like, and it just like, it gets like 20,000 likes, but then half the people are just saying, Oh, I've seen this before. Here we go again. Or copycat and stuff. And then there's those people that just tweet things and it goes viral. And like, you can tell it's not how they really are. Like it'll be sarcastic or like overly sexual or something like that. And then you click on it and the first tweet underneath is, wow, this really blew up. Um, I don't really have anything to promote, but uh, check out my SoundCloud or check out this. Or And it's just like, it, like people mistake social media for the real world. And I have statistics. There are 7.5 billion people in the world. Okay. There's 330 million people on Twitter. And there's about 1 billion on Instagram, which is a lot. Wow. It is a lot. I didn't know this. But think about it like this. That means out of the world population, the people you're trying to impress, the people you're trying to get to follow you, the the people that you want to be in front of and go viral, 
Twitter is 4% of the world. 4%. And Instagram is 13% of the world. That is so minor. Like, social media is not a reflection of the real world. Like, I'm more of a liberal person. I love how liberal Twitter... I mean, it can go overboard on the PC. But I love how liberal Twitter is. But it does. it's not a reflection of the real world. Like, I think it's it's like confirmation bias. Like, you put things out there on Twitter and you want to hear the same thing back. Some people just want to argue on Twitter. You know, copying people's things. You know, trying to... The hippest lingo and all that stuff just to get all this recognition... But then it comes back to my initial point of why, like, what does it do for you? You get like, nothing out of it. You, like, maybe, like, even financially, like, it, like, the people that, like, my initial point was going to be about people who look up to, like, Kardashians and stuff like that. Because, like, what's the point? Like, the, what's the point? Like, I, I look up to players and musicians and stuff. But even that, I try and have, like, a barrier between them where it's, like, when, when like, the, when the Me Too movement came and people were getting you know, like kind of thrown under the bus and people are like, oh, they better not say anything about this person. I love them. And it's like, well, well you don't know them. Right. Like you'd hate exactly. to think. Yeah. Like you'd hate to think that they did something wrong. And I get that. It'll shatter your perception of them. Mm -hmm. But you don't know them. Like I love, I love Baker Mayfield. I like LeBron. But when people say like, oh, you LeBron cheated on his wife, you know, it's like, well, I, I don't want to think that's true, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, when uh, CK Lewis got me too. Yes. I was, I was, I was bummed. Yeah. I wasn't shattered. No, it's like if like if somebody came out and hit Michael Rappaport because I really like him or Colin Coward, like the guys I like, it's kind of like I'd hate to think it's true, but at the same time, it's like I, I just think the whole overvaluing of social media, it's just like I feel like people just need to take a step back and be like, what's the point? Like, what's like I get that there's, you know, there's confirmation bias on Twitter. Like people, you want people to agree with you. You want to be seen. You want your life to be special. The idea of going viral and inst instant fame is there. But even those people that get millions of views, like, how does their life really get that much better? Like, uh, yeah, like I mean, obviously, there's there, there's a select few. Like that girl that went on Dr. Phil, the um, Catch Me, what was that? Catch Me Outside. Yeah. Like, there's people I that... I don't think her life got better, though. That, that, I don't know. I enjoy social media for what it is and you know have fun with it you know if you want to argue argue if you want just sports updates that's fine if you want to try to go viral just to see if you can do it that's fine but it takes up such a tiny like twitter is not the world it's not it is such a tiny tiny aspect of the world you don't have to impress people on twitter focus on your real life it's like uh, this is more i'm sorry it's like when i if i spend four hours playing the sims and i make my sim study and study and study and work out and work out and work out work out work out and i'm like i could have been doing that <laughs> i could have been studying something i could have been working out why am i spending all this time and energy in something that's not going to improve my life and not get me anywhere so that's well that comes down to like why well, play video games and that that's a different argument for, is it for entertainment and to relax and yeah. let steam off yeah. yeah i would i would say that yeah but also, do, do I have any time left for mine? Or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Keep go on, go into your head. Up. That's me. That's me. Get off Get off fucking Twitter. So the thing that I've had it up to here with my 5'6", five, 5'7", five, how tall am I? I don't know. Not that tall. I think you're 5'8", because I'm 5'7". If I'm 5'8", I'm barely 5'8". Anyway, so the thing that has got me... I've heard this a lot in class lately, but or like in a meeting, people say something and they say this phrase, and it fucking drives me nuts. I'm gonna piggyback off of that. Have you have you heard that phrase? One of my I won't name names, but one of my professors in the Neo MFA said it every single class. I fuck I hear it every single class. I hate that phrase. I don't know why. I guess I don't really understand why. It's it's a little a bit like my fear of jellyfish. It feels a little irrational. I just don't like it. It's like it feels lazy. Like you're about to say a lazy thought. Do you understand what I mean? It's it maybe not a lazy thought. It's a lazy transition. It's a, oh, it's so, it, yeah, it's gross. It's a gross transition. It's like, what do you mean you're going to, you can't get but on it, my back. It, it is a good analogy though. If you're, I if guess. you're, if you're adding something to a conversation, it makes sense because physically you're piggybacking onto what they're, you're adding value to what they're saying. So it, I'm not saying you're, you're allowed to hate it. Right, I don't good. love it either because I associate with that class, but it does make sense. I think. Verbally, it makes sense. I don't know. I just, I would rather hear like, I like that thought. I have this thought. It kind of works with your thought. I know that's longer and more drawn out than I'm a piggyback on that, but it's. Let me let me ask you this: do, do you associate that phrase with a particular student, professor, or class that maybe you don't like? Yes, I do. Okay, is it a is it a teacher, class, or professor? It's a uh, sorry, uh, teacher, student, or professor. It's a student. It's a, a co-student. Co-student, and yeah. you don't like the co-student. 
and they say it. Yes. Yes. Maybe you just don't like that. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. No, dude, but that's totally... Well, I've heard it in other classes since then, and maybe it's just the association. No, dude, there are things... Association is a totally true thing. Like, I love Tyler Wright, but you remember that's debatable. That's debatable. God, that got under my skin. That's debatable. God, I love you, Tyler. I love <laughs> you like a brother. God, I hated that's debatable. So I totally understand where you're coming from. You know, he's going to say that just every day. Every, he's going to text he has, it to you. He has to listen first. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Uh, uh, which, by the way, thank you for leaving a review, Tyler. Piggyback off of that? Yes. I don't like that. Okay. And, and that, it's just, it's just, I'm just, I'm tired of fucking so, saying that phrase. Okay. So what is your, rec- you kind of taught, you, you mentioned a few. What's your recommendation? So if somebody is having the urge, the intuition to say, to piggyback off of that, what do you, Charlie, recommend that they say instead? I would say, I don't think there's like a quick transition phase that works better than that. I'm sure there is. But like, that thought is, what you said is valid. I'd like to add to that thought. And that's a little more drawn out, but I think it validates what they've said more efficiently than I'm going to piggyback on what you said and make it my own. Do you have to wear a monocle? <laughs> uh, in addition to what you're saying, I'm just going to throw this out valid. there. valid. I have, I'm in English is my, is my field. That is what we've had it up to here with. An oldie but a goodie, would you rather? My favorite. Hands down, favorite. Oh, it's your favorite? It is my... I think I said it last time, because you said you didn't want to... You're like, I don't want to say my favorite yet. (laughs) I'm undecided. But yeah, this is definitely my favorite. I think I said they're all my babies, so I like them all. Yeah, you've nursed all of them. That's right. So yeah, quick quick breakdown. We we present a scenario, and we offer three would-you-rathers. It, it, it's like multiple like we one we say which would we rather do but then also one of them is true they're all typically supposed to be a little bizarre a little off the wall so let's jump in all right so this first one you and myself and uh two other guys we go to a hotel right okay. yeah so we're gonna spend the night it's new york and it's parker and alex <laughs> no it's uh it's, yeah but okay. not new york but ohio okay cool cleveland actually oh good and we decide that we're gonna drink Okay. And you have many, many drinks. A lot of amaretto sours. Too many drinks. And you're like, you know what? Fuck this place. And you start smashing things and you break a sliding glass door and you start pushing around uh, female staff employees. Oh. Staff employees. Staff employees. <laughs> female. Not the staff employees. Female staff. And they call the cops. As they should. So would you rather. Yeah. Pull out a gun. <laughs> refuse to give your identity. Or start crying and screaming. Oh, man. I would, um, I would probably refuse to give my identity. That is what this Florida man, who was later identified, did when the cops arrested him. Really? Yes. They th- they thought he he thought they wouldn't find out. He thinks he's the Joker. I don't he's know what Heath he thought. Ledger. But he uh he got bailed out by his coworkers. Those are some good. Co- Where's he working? I was thinking the same thing. Damn. I was like, who would bail me You're out? Like, Bro code, man. <laughs> Those bitches deserved it. Those staff employee bitches. Yeah. <laughs> so that is my, my first wow. one. Wow. Okay. So um, it's the holiday season coming up, and yes. you work at a medical facility. You're a do- I mean, you don't like doctors. Mm-mm. It's very ironic then for this story that you would choose to be one. <laughs> but um, you are. You work at a medical facility. You're like, I need a little side hustle. I need to make a little extra cash for the holidays. Moonlighting. Mo- what? Moonlighting. What is that? Oh, you work a second job. Like oh, cops, really? moonlighting security guards. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you need me to throw off your flow. No, 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 no. I, I like learning. Um, I probably had heard that at some point, but it's not. Yes, you, you want a moonlight. Okay. You werewolf you. So, would you rather, would you rather sell fake doctor notes to high school students? Oh, no. Would you rather swipe random prescriptions and actually use them as Christmas presents for your fair friends and family? Or would you rather take extended lunches and be an Uber driver while you're on the clock? Ooh, those are all bad. I think the last one's the least bad, so I'd probably do that. Okay. 52, 50, 50, <laughs> let me start over. 52-year-old uh, Belinda was working at a medical clinic in Louisiana, and she thought it would be dope to have high schoolers pay $20 for fake doctor notes. Um, eventually... Uh, somebody called the physician, and he was like, I don't know who this is. I don't know who you're talking about. So uh, needless to say, she got in trouble. But th- I like the Uber ID- idea because, yeah, yeah, so you take a little bit of a longer lunch. Like, yeah. who doesn't? Come on. Come on. <laughs> People got to oh. get to the airport. Belinda knew better than that. That's I know. Tough. Shame on her. And that's interesting, though. $20 for a fake doctor's note. Probably gym class. Anything. 
All right. So I know you like your job. Yes. But let's pretend you didn't. And you got another job. Uh, and this job is with the History Channel. Oh, God. Okay. Actually, this might be up your sister's alley now that I think about it. Okay. History um, Channel. Is that the one that does, like, Ghost Adventures, or is that the Travel Channel? That's Travel Channel. Okay, much better. History is, um, Boring. the aliens. Bore. Oh, I like aliens. Okay. <laughs> I'm, you, I'm in. You got ancient, me intrigued. Ancient aliens. That's probably why I changed So jobs. now they're doing, um, uh, a show where they're revamping the pain scale to make the ultimate pain scale, and you have to get stung by a bug. Okay. Would you rather get stung by an executioner wasp, a cow killer, or a bullet ant? What's a cow killer? Well, because I've, I've watched some things on this, um, it is actually a, a wasp that lives underground, doesn't fly. They re- they walk after your ass. They don't fly. <laughs> they come crawling out and walk after you like an ant and like, I'm going to get you. <laughs> Once you stop to tie your shoe, it's over, motherfucker. I think it's more like you step on them on accident. Oh, okay. okay. I See, I've been stung by ground wasps, but they, they flew. It's, they it's f- essentially a ground wasp. But, but they it fly. Doesn't, it doesn't have wings. You. <sighs> Gotta be some slow ass people getting hit by these. <laughs> um, what was the third option? A bullet ant. Okay, bullet ant. That sounds bad. I I know I know the article. I read it. It's the executioner wasp. You read this article? I'm sorry. So <gasps> you... I, that's not what I would want. I you know I would see that's the answer. But I'm going to no. pick. I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick the the, the ant that crawls after me. They're all bad, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna keep walking. I'm gonna keep my pace up. I'm gonna get my steps on my Fitbit. I'm getting away from that second one. That's what I choose. But I was gonna say Rob. I can't pronounce his last name. Avila. Yeah. Took an uh a uh, executioner wasp to the arm. Yes. But what happened? I, I I stopped reading there. Like, what became? Was it just like, ouch? Or did uh, he... he said it, the pain, uh, in quote, comes in waves. Yeah. And it gets worse. Okay. Did That's probably s- how we would feel if we were doing this segment while eating hot peppers. Probably. Did you uh, Did you see what it looks like? No. I have a video. Not gonna... from him, but from someone else. So they'll see it on social media. Yep. I'm okay. going to post it. Dope. It's like, I think it's like 20 minutes, but it's still cool. Uh, there's a guy who's actually done all three of these. That sounds terrible. His name is Coyote Pearson. He's so stupid. <laughs> he's so dumb. I hope he was paid favorably. I think he's paid. I don't know. He's he's so stupid, though. It's fun to watch. I bet. I can't believe you fucking saw that article. I'm sorry, dude. I didn't know this was, I didn't think this, that would ever happen. I, I figured it would happen eventually. And you know, it took five months. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad at all. All right. So now, so you're no longer a medical clinic. You got fired. Uber never existed. So you're now an officer. Okay, um, sure. Not Night Watch, like me and Annie. You're a full-blown police officer. Do you like officers more than doctors? No. Oh, jeez. What do you like, Charlie? What do you like? I like construction workers. Well, that doesn't fit. All right, so you're you're a police officer, and you get a call from this dude, all right? And he's like, hey. And you're like, hey. And he's like, all right, listen. So I I, I have uh, – I, I want to leave my house. I, I want to get away from my wife and my live-in girlfriend. They both live with him. Yeah. He's got a wife and a girlfriend. Do I say to call his lawyer? <laughs> no. And he's like, I want to take the kids, but they won't let me. Um, okay. So, so you being the good officer you are, you go to uh, his house because you, you want to get stuff solved and figured out. And this is a friend of mine or some no, guy? No, 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 no. It's a guy that wants to get, a- he wants to get away from his wife and his girlfriend and wants to take the kids. But they say no, so he's trying to get legal and in- legal people involved. Okay, sure. And he calls the cops. Like I, a lawyer makes sense, but for whatever reason, he calls the cops. Okay. So, so you you go, you enter the house. Okay. So when you enter his house, would you rather that there be two hundred animals in the house of various species? Would you rather the children's grandfather is dead and decaying in the living room, or would you rather? That the gentleman, his wife, and his girlfriend were having a threesome on a cocaine-covered table while the children were playing PlayStation 2 in the room next door. Like, next over. Like, the next room. What would you rather, Charlie? What would you rather see? I mean, all these are really bad, and I'd probably have to arrest them no matter what. Uh, I guess. I guess the grandfather decaying. Well, you've had to deal with dead people before. Yeah. That's, I don't remember what we were watching. I guess it was probably, maybe it was Dr. Sleep. Yes, it was. I was thinking, like, when they were talking about the smell of the yeah. body, I was like, oh, Charlie, I wonder, did you connect with that moment, by the way? I actually, I th- had the same thought, and I was like, I, 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 while that we were digging that up, I was like, that was the worst experience of my life. Yeah. This is going to be terrible. And I, when I, he yeah. threw up, yes, I was like, that's valid. See, I thought of you in that moment when we were watching that scene. I thought I of myself, you know. too. So, reportedly, 
in this Florida home with this man, his wife, and his girlfriend, and his three children who were ages 8, 9, and 10. They had 245 species of animals. Oh not different, God. not one per species. Yeah. Um, but let me let me go through this list Trying reportedly. Trying to make over here. Two cats, four dogs, 12 rabbits, 10 sugar gliders, seven bearded dragons, uh, four hamsters, 95 mice, 83 rats, and reportedly at least one dead guinea pig just rotting in are a cage. You, are you sure the mice and the rats weren't just, like, there. wild? Well, reportedly also they were knee-deep in trash. Oh, um, my God. So instead of helping the dude out and getting him his kids, they took the kids away. They took the animals away, and uh, they're under legal yeah. stuff. So yeah, that's fucked. yeah, pretty much. I wasn't gonna say it, but you said it. So yeah, that is that's that one. Okay, so my last one. This being, I hope this we don't have the same article. Uh, this being the week of my bachelor party. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is particularly relevant. Okay. Uh, so you show up at this party. Cool. You didn't plan it at all. The uh, the brother, the brother-in-law. My brother-in-law. Uh, no. Your brother-in-law. No. Who's brother-in-law? The guy who's getting married. That's you. No, not in this scenario. Okay. No. no. So I'm just at the party. You're just at the party. Right. Some guy. Yeah, the, the brother to the groom. I don't have this story, by the way. Okay, good. All right. So he's hosting this party, and before you can get in, you have to sign an NDA. Okay. Non-disclosure agreement. Oh, God. Is it the McKamey? Oh, God. Oh, God. Good. 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 <laughs> okay. Nothing. And, um... You know, going in, it's going to be just a crazy weekend, like three days of gambling, drinking, strippers, and probably more. <laughs> probably more. Probably more. Can't imagine more. So would you rather leave, not even sign, just leave? <laughs> um, would you go in and promise to tell nobody? Or would you go in, but you're going to like full spy mode, like you're going to tell someone? Like you know you're going to. Oh, man. It's probably A or C. Me being who I am, I probably wouldn't do it. But if I knew the person, like, the story kind of sets it up, I probably, I mean, it would depend on who it was, whether or not I was going to tell. But I, I'd pro- probably be a spy. That sounds fun. I'll be a okay, spy. Okay, so see? Yeah. So this guy, he goes to this party. He goes in. He signs the NDA. They're drinking. They, they actually, they do skydiving the first day. They do archery. And then they're drinking all fucking night. And then strippers come in. They're like, oh, man, we're going to go gambling because we don't want to be, like, cheating on our girlfriends. Yeah. And um, the groom stays. Okay. The groom stays, and then they come up from the rooms, and of course they come into the room, and they catch the groom full on cheating with his with his wife, soon to be wife. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. So he's it's just a stripper, and this guy, and he goes home. He's like, I don't want to tell you, but he tells his girlfriend, who is the friend of the bride. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, stuff happens. So wait, he sleeps with the stripper? No, not the guy. The groom does. The groom sleeps with the stripper. Yeah. Well, why do people bring strippers to bachelor parties anyway? What's the point? I don't point? know. I don't know. Uh, uh, spoiler alert. You, you won't have one <laughs> at yours. I didn't have one. At my, what, I don't get what I the, wouldn't expect It's to. your last night being single. But you you're know, not you've been single, dating for, Yeah, I nev- never understood that. Like, like. I've been single for f- almost five years. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that'll be my excuse going, well, I can't. You can still use it. Be like, hey, I'm a single man. I'm not married. It doesn't engage it's in my ass. It's not the medieval. It's not the 1900s. 1900s it's not the it's 17- not 1994 <laughs> it's not the 1700s like you're 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 still with somebody okay so so what happened does it he told his girlfriend oh and like stuff. so he was a spy so yeah. is is he being taken to court because he did kind of break the confidentiality thing i'm not sure if it was actually a legal document they didn't say i'm gonna look for updates on it but they, would... <laughs> they probably took it to an attorney and they're like uh sir the word the word bro is on here 14 times <laughs> And legitly, which is not, it's either legitimately, it's not legitly. Well, it was in England, so. Oh. Okay. That, I guess that doesn't mean, that can still be bros <laughs> anything. Yeah. All right. Um, Charlie, have you ever been in California? Oh, yeah. A couple times. Really? I have family in California. What part of California? San Diego. I like San Diego. I would, I would want, yeah, I would want, you've been to LA? Yeah. Dude, it's did beautiful. you know that California knows how to party? Fuck yeah, it does. All right, cool. So, so you, this this could be you. Maybe this is about you. I didn't. I, I didn't. Maybe I didn't catch the name. Well, are you're not from Nebraska though, are you? No, I'm not. Okay. So let's say that you are in California. No cool. Had a party. All right. So you wake up early oh, in California. Again. You wake up early in California, and you're like, I feel great. You stretch. You look at the sun. The sun winks at you, and you're like. I'm going to make the most of my day. I'm going to go for a jog. 
Okay, sure. <laughs> and uh, so you're going for a jog, and along the trail, you run into or jog into a swarm of flies. Ah. Yeah. So would you rather swallow a fly? Causing yourself to projectile vomit all the Taco Bell that you ate the night before, which is probably why you had the decision to make today better. Would you rather get a parasitic eye worm in your right eye, or would you rather have extreme painful diarrhea for four days due to cholera? What is the f- point of swallowing a fly? <laughs> like, to teach them all a lesson? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just mean you're running, your mouth's open, oh, okay. and then a, a, a fly just follows, it goes in your mouth, and <laughs> you're not ready, hit your gag reflex, and you just everywhere. I guess I'd rather eat the fly okay. than anything else. Well, flippy to page, flippy to page, flippity floppity, flippy to page. Uh, so a Nebraska woman, uh, not you, right. was running in California, Carmel Valley. Or, you know what, maybe they call it Caramel Valley, Valley yeah. that which I think is wrong. So she, And then she ran into the swarm of flies. Mm-hmm. So about, I think they said about a month, uh, some designated time later, she noticed irritation in her right eye. And she proceeded to pull out a half-inch translucent worm out of her right eye. Um, so apparently this, the flies that she ran into is called cattle eye worm. The, they, it affects cattle, obviously. That's that's the point. It affects cattle and, and cows more than, than humans. This is only the second time this ever happened. Yeah, but so so she had it. Thankfully, she got medical attention. They said she could have lost the eye if it's she had the worst story you've ever fucking told me. I know. Isn't it terrible? Oh, my God. Dude, I'd go Big Boss or, like, Patchy the Pirate on that shit. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm dumping hydrogen peroxide on my body and just, I'm done. Like, But, yeah, so oh. imagine pulling a worm out of your eye because you ran into flies. I mean, you know what? Like, that's 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 messed up. That is messed up. Okay, new segment time. If you guys follow us on social media, which you should at the Segway Podcast, we put out a QA and a and we got some questions. So now it's time for some answers. Mostly they're dumb, right? Yeah, we'll start with the serious. Well, no, we'll end with the serious one. We'll okay. end with the serious one. We'll start okay. stupid. So Logan, Logan, <laughs> Logan asked too yeah. on Instagram and Twitter. And it's funny because Instagram, he was like really serious, which would be mm-hmm. our last one. And then, and then Twitter, he brought this dumbass shit. <laughs> so he says, if the moon was made out of spare ribs, would we eat it? I put some thought to this. Did you? Mine's yeah. fast. Can I just get mine out sure, of the way? Go ahead. Um, no. One, I'm a vegetarian. Two, space is cold. So you're asking me to eat really cold spare ribs? Fuck that. There ain't no microwave on the moon. So, no. If Okay. So, like, if the moon was made out of some kind of foodstuffs, I, is it, I'm out of two minds because... A, it could like solve world hunger, or B, it would you you would eat it, but also it would throw out the gravity of the Earth and uh, it would mess up with the like the moon. You yeah, you'd kind of be an asshole. You'd mess up the tides. Yeah, you mess up tides. Kind of a dick. No more you... full moon. How come? How come the world's ruined? Well, <laughs> you know when I get hangry, <laughs> we discovered the moon was made of spare ribs. How many cows? Anyway, and move on. Cat asked us if AI became self-aware, who would win in a battle? Alexa, Cortana, or Siri? Well, I mean, like, if it was Halo, Cortana would win, but I don't think so. I think probably Alexa. You know, they all listen pretty stupid. I think Google has the best AI, honestly. See, I vote for Siri just because I think uh, I think she's listening the most. Like, I think Alexa's always listening. Yeah, but not everybody has. Like, what is Alexa? Isn't it Echo? Yeah. A lot of people don't have Echo. I have two. I think more people have smartphones than those Echoes. And every smart, I think iPhones are more predominant than Echoes. I think Windows phones have Cortanas. Do they? I think so. Yeah, but do you know that? Fact check. You have to fact check fact this. Fact check. If that's true, then possibly. I just know Siri's a bitch, and she's always listening. I think Alexa. Alexa is. I, well, I think like I said, Google at Home has the best AI. I don't know, I don't know okay. if it has a name. If, if that we, might be Cortana. What is Cortana? It's a, you know, it's another girl who talks to you. Yeah, but on what platform? I think Google. Mm. I'm, I'm still going Siri. That's my personal opinion. I don't know. We'd have to, you know, I think r- we're Rumble in the Jungle Part Two. We'll have to see it. Um, hopefully, it never happens. Hopefully. Uh, so it, who are you going with? Cortana. No, I'm going with Siri. Was it Skynet? I vote Skynet. What? That's Terminator. Oh, okay. That's not my cup of tea. <laughs> Alex asked us, Ravioli, Ravioli. Where's the formula? I don't know. <laughs> I hope he remembers this. There was a meme of. <laughs> do you remember those uh like well and they're still kind of predominant like those um commercials where they're like the person was texting and driving and they died and 
is this worth it? It's like, hey, yeah. are, and then there's like, that's it before mm-hmm. they crash and die. And there was this meme of this lady sitting down and she looks so sad and somber. And it's like <laughs> the last thing they texted me is <laughs> for ravioli, ravioli, give me the formioli. <laughs> if I can find the meme, I'll post it on oh, social. Can find that. Easy. It's oh, I few memes. Did you not get the Trump one where he's like about to say thick? I had no idea. He, it looks like Trump was about to say thick. Yeah. Okay. okay. No. So, so that's what it made me think of. But here's here's my here's my answer, my humble opinion. Because I don't I don't know I don't know these things. I don't know where people keep formulas. I think that Chef Boyardee has the recipe tattooed on his lip. And that's why he always has his mustache. He's dead. Well, he died with the form. I'm just answering his question, man. I'm not I putting think, pieces together. That's my thought. Mr. Underneath, front, top lip, tattooed mustache. I think Mr. Krabs has it in the vault in the bikini bottom. Bikini bottom? Bikini bottom. Bikini bottom. What's the next question? <laughs> North Route asked, <laughs> why is it Mo Turk following you guys? That is a fucking great question, North Route. He is now, right? He is now. Okay. That was the whole point. Love you, Moturk. Wasn't well, wasn't the whole interaction with you and Logan just emojis? <laughs> it was yes. just like a sad, like a surprise. Yep. Oh, my God. Okay. Maddie asked us, uh, what is your spirit animal and why? I, find- I have I have two. I know yours. I know it. Yeah. You know. Um, you know. I have two. So you go first because you're concrete. I have two that I'm going to present. So I want to know what you think on both of them. She asked me that because of the interviews, right? I, I don't know. Because I always say that in the interview. Oh, that's a good question. That's yeah. what I thought it was. So, yeah. Oh, a bear. Yeah, I know. It's oh, a bear. Yeah. What kind of bear? Uh, brown bear. And I believe the follow-up was pourquoi or porqué. Porqué? It was oh, pourquoi. Oh, it's why? French. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. It just... it. You got to get more like, than I don't I know. Like that's to, surface like level to, of shit. I like to sleep like a bear. I'll eat berries and also meat and fish. I, I don't, I'm big like a bear. My hair looks like a bear. I don't know. It just it fits right. I don't know. Okay. No, that's fine. I just got to give the audience something to latch on to. Yeah, that wasn't it. So here, here are our two that I'm stuck between. I'm leaning towards the first one, but I'll give you both, and you can give me your opinion. First spirit animal, fruit bat. Why? Why am I like a fruit bat? Because it's a vegetarian. They wrap themselves up to stay warm. They're night creatures, and I am definitely a night animal. They like to eat fruits, as do I. I love fruits. I'm, I'm tiny, like they are. <laughs> Uh, they like being with others. They live in colonies, and they are long distance travelers. They like to travel for food. They must sometimes, and I love going for drives. I can drive for hours, and it feels like minutes. So that's my first one. I've for a while now I've identified as a fruit bat. My second one is a turtle, and I identify with the turtle because I'm slow and because I'm an introvert. So I like to hide away, like in my shell. I I've been told I eat like a turtle. Like apparently, if I have like a sandwich, I like extend my neck out to eat it like a turtle extends its neck out <laughs> and also um i'm not against getting into a verbal spat so i i'll snap like snapping turtle i will snap oh, okay. at you i'll come at you um so i feel i feel a connection to both i lean fruit bat but um so w- what do you think i'd say fruit bat yeah I'd make a, a valid point with the traveling and stuff like that traveling nighttime small colonies warmth I'm a fruit bat with a little turtle in me, a little turtle quality. <laughs> like when you do your uh, your heritage thing, or what is that called? The, uh, leaf. the DNA, yeah. What is the leaf thing? What is Ancestry. that? Ancestry. Yeah, I go if you, I go to ancestry.com, they're gonna be like, "Well, your parents are fruit bats, but your grandfather <laughs> was a tortoise." I said the that fruit bat's spirit animal is a turtle. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So our last and final question, again by Logan, which is a good one. This was the Instagram one. He said. Why are we called the Segway Podcast? Have we never explained that? I think we did, Logan. But go ahead, Charlie. You, you t- take a shot at it. Okay, so... Th- <laughs> take a shot. I know you're going <laughs> to fuck it up. Um, so, <laughs> we're called the Segway because we work in transitions. But, like, so we have our segment. That's the segment. And we move on to the next segment. We try to keep the segments different except for the pillars. So, that's why it's called the Segway. No, that's good. That's, that's it. We didn't want to just have random topics and ramble up here. We want it to be a segment-based podcast so that it's concise, clean. You can learn and love the, the segments. You can get excited when you see a segment's coming up. It's the pieces are greater than the whole. We're about segments, and that's why we are the Segway Podcast. Would I change it now if it didn't affect anything? Potentially. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But yeah, we're sticking with it, and we are the Segway Podcast. Okay, on this second week cinema, we went and watched... 
Doctor Sleep. The was it light sequel to The Shining? Not like light. No, it like, is. It is. Is it just a sequel? It's a sequel to Stanley. Well, okay. Stephen King wrote it as a sequel to The Shining. I knew that. And this film was created as a sequel to Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, the 1980 movie. Not the. Not the mini series. Yeah. The Tim mini series from '97. This is not related to that. I did watch the um, Nostalgia Critic. Oh, did you? I did. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Cause Stephen King hated. He actually he did the mini series in response to how much he disliked Kubrick's uh, movie, but you he's, know he's wrong. It's a good movie. I have been in the dark about Doctor Sleep, and and I was trying to figure out why. I'm like, why did I not know about this? Why was I so confused? And this is my answer. In 2004, there is a TV miniseries called Kingdom Hospital. It was by Stephen King. It was about a hospital, spooky. 2004. Okay. So in my mind. I'm like, okay, Dr. Sleep, Kingdom Hospital. I'm like, this is a play on that. I didn't know that Dr. Sleep was in associate. It, I didn't know it was associated with The Shining. I thought it was in that universe, which I never got into. So that's why, because the book came out in 2013. So this is a six-year-old book. And so the reason it kind of went under my radar is because I just assumed it was about that. I didn't know it was a relation to The Shining. I knew The Shining had a sequel. Yeah. I don't remember how I heard about it, but I knew it had a sequel. Okay. Did you know that the sequel would have Obi-Wan Kenobi in it? Uh, not until you told me. I know. This is the second time you and McGregor, well, second world he gets to use the Force in, which is dope. All right, so <laughs> we're going to jump into it, but let me, okay, you know, let's do it. And yeah, let's go. Here we go. Plot. So let me give a brief... Uh, you do your best. Over, let me, let me, let me just explain the movie really quick. It was uh, thick. But, so, overview. So, it takes place... And so Danny from The Shining, the little boy, grows up, has his demons, is learning to overcome them. And then, so that's part one. Part two is there's another little girl who is experiencing similar shining qualities that Danny had when he was younger. And then part three is there's this cult group that literally feeds on people's shining and abilities. So that that's my overview of what it was. It's not bad. It was pretty good, right? Yeah, it's not bad. I commend the plot. I think that the those three aspects were interwoven incredibly well. I thought they did a really good job establishing it because I didn't I didn't get a refresher. I've seen The Shining multiple times. I attempted to read the book back when I was like 13 and I've seen the miniseries, but it's been a long time. But I didn't feel like there's that one moment where you're like, who's Tony? Yeah. But other than that, I never felt out of the loop. Like they did a really good job of. There were a lot of callbacks and like little Easter eggs for people that are really into the series. And they also did a really good job of like, oh, you, you're not super familiar with The Shining? I got you. You can still enjoy this movie. So I thought they did a really good job of that. They got the major callback at the end, which is dope. And without, I'm assuming they must not have had access to the original film because they made choices. They redid flashbacks. Did you hear? I think they did that on purpose. I think because they wanted to put their new characters in it yeah well i mean you can't get jack nicholson right you can't you also can't get the original mom you can't get the original kid right so, so i, I that's guess that's they true that. they, that's true they did they did a good job of refilming that and J- the guy who played jack nicholson i, I thought, thought he did really good i did too and i guess that's in acting but either yeah. way they did a good job getting his likeness from that film yeah if we had a costume section or like a makeup section i would say that'd be part of it too that's true. That That's is true. Fine. I got some plot points I didn't love, but I, I want you to get your two cents in first and then okay. get to my things that I'm, I I didn't quite Well, Well, okay. Love. I just want to say I thought it was a really good plot. I, like I said, it was really strong. I was interested in the story. It, it was maybe a little bit of a weak story, but it was still interesting. I thought the beginning, some of the um the grammar for the camera was a little disjointed. Some of the what? The, the cinemata- cinematography? No, the, um, the cinema grammar, like how the camera speaks. Was a little disjointed. And what, like, well, give give me an example. Uh, well, what I, scene are um, you thinking of when you I'm say that? I'm thinking about, like, when he woke up from the bar and how it kept, like, flashing. Mm-hmm. That felt a little disjointed, but I, I get it. It was, he, he's waking up from a bender. Yeah, I think, so I think that was to... part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was still a little hard for me to get into. I think that was... Would you file that under cinematography, though? No, I wouldn't. Okay. I think it's under plot. Because uh, I have later cinematography, kind of the opposite of what I'm saying right now. Okay. But because of that's how it's... I wouldn't put that under the camera. Exactly. I think that's under how it's written. Okay. So I get, um Okay. So what do you have any negatives about the plot that you want to bring forth first? Like I said, I thought it was a little weak. The girl who's like fifteen. Yeah. I think 
if you would have cut her out, it would have been perfectly See, fine. See, that's how I feel about the girl from the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Didn't need her. Didn't need her. I, I understand what you're saying. Her, I, you're her right. purpose was to show how people get initiated. That's pretty much all she served. Yeah, I got that, but I feel like it was like, you could have cut that out. I agree. The way that The way that her... Although I did like her little story arc, so I don't know. The way her character was, the way her it ended for her, I agree with you. I'm like, well, that wasn't necessary. Yeah, it was a little anticlimactic. But I think it was like, how do people join this cult? Let's show you firsthand. I think that was her main purpose. I think they're trying to set up, like, if they had done well, she'd be the next, like, leader. Yeah, I guess. Okay, anyway. Um, so that's my little two cents. So here, here, I have two points, two things I didn't love about the plot. And one of them is I think factual and the other one is my own personal problems factual one and I I don't think this is too spoilery because I'm not going to go into details I just think it's a fact the people you're rooting for like Danny the guy he meets and uh, the little girl they always have the upper hand the entire movie the entire movie they're the ones with the tricks they're the ones thinking ahead they're the ones setting the traps the entire movie yeah I don't from beginning middle and end yeah it is the people you're rooting for setting traps against the cult. Now, there is a revenge aspect, and there's an aspect where you are in on the joke, and you're in on what's going to happen, and you get excited because you're like, oh, oh, it's it's, it's like it's that dramatic irony where they don't know, but we know. And that works. That's really good. But there was like a 10-minute frame in the movie near the end where I'm like, oh, maybe things won't go according to plan. Everything else, the people, our heroes are one step ahead. And I thought that was interesting. Like, yeah, do you agree I, with what I'm saying? I do, but it also doesn't go as well as they'd like it to. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, like they, like every, the one time when uh, Rose the Hat, I think that's her name, Rose the Hat, mm-hmm. the time that you think she's going to get the upper hand, it was like, like, no. And I just, I think that's crazy. It's a testament to the child, but like you have to have the, it's like normally in a movie, it's like start here. And then you start moving up, and then you go down a little bit, and then you start going up again, and then you have that terrible crisis moment, and it's like, do they rebound or not? And then they work their way back up to the climax. This one is like, like bad things happen, but seriously, they are so much smarter than the cult every step of the way. So that's one thing. Then my next point is maybe I'm a sexist asshole. (laughs) Maybe I'm a sexist asshole, because I had this thought. So, Rose the Hat, the leader of the cult, at one point is chasing them at the end. And you know that she's following them. And I had this moment. And shame on me. Like, I'm, I'm being as honest and transparent as possible. Shame on me. But I had this moment where I'm like, if it was a creepy, scary man or demonic thing that's scary looking that's chasing them and hunting them down, would I be more terrified than this attractive lady of this cult who's in her 30s and i haven't seen her really do there was one bad bad moment or two but other than that i haven't seen her be overly vicious like if it had been her her um her guy instead maybe even him though i we are we kind of discussed this before we started recording there's this is not a terrifying movie it's not no it's It's more scary action thriller suspense which is fine which is absolutely fine Yeah, yeah but i wasn't afraid of her so the idea of her hunting them on top of them always having the upper hand it left some to be desired in terms of like the survival horror quality of like the movie. So those are. Would you do you have anything to touch on on top of that? I, uh, do you want to yeah. piggyback on top of that? I I like your point. I'm gonna go off my own point. Yeah, I do have one. I wrote it down real quick. I I don't. They mentioned it in the movie, but I was like, why didn't they ever catch Danny? When when he was a kid, do you know why? I think because he was repressing. But she did. They tried to. They tried to solve it by her questioning it herself. Yeah. But I think it's a fact that the little girl in the movie was open about her shining. Where okay. Danny was like, "Hide it, hide it, hide it, hide okay. it." He was repressing his shining. I don't think they actually said that though, did they? It was alluded to. Okay, I, I think I you were supposed it. to pick up on it, but I don't think it was. He, he you kind of learned because he kept telling her. You McGregor's character was like, "Don't do it. Stop shining. Keep your head down. Don't do it." Yeah. So it was supposed to be like that's why. I just missed it. Okay, that's fine. All right. So I I uh mm, I give it a four. I give it a four as well. All right. That is a score of eight. Pacing. I think there could have been. I told you already. The whole girls could have been cut out. I think there could have been a good fifteen to twenty minutes cut out of this hour, two hour twenty minute movie. Made a two hour movie, and it would have been nothing. Would have changed. It wouldn't have suffered. So that being said, I think it was a little slow. 
was it slow or was it just too much? Because I don't think I think I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Well, like, do you um, think? Like, I think a movie can be have too much but not feel slow. Like, I never felt it was slow. Like, you didn't? I no, never. I did. I I can tell you where it felt slow. See, okay, it I, was important to it. Yeah, but it did feel slow. I'm talking about the. I don't know if I can. How much can I say? I don't you know. Just cut it later if you can't. <sighs> the nursing home scene. The nursing home sequence. Nursing home sequence. In, in the beginning, where he's like sobering up. Oh. I felt like it was important, but it was um, it was slow how it did because you know what I mean. See that fits the horror genre though. Like you have to take the genre. But it wasn't horror. But it, it was like that's what it considers itself. Whether or not we find it, there's probably people that found it really scary. I'm just saying we didn't. But I didn't find it scary. Horror horror genres typically have the slow build, which I appreciate. And I like I already mentioned earlier about horror, like more than comedy. Like I'm a big horror fan, so my suspension of accepting horror is probably a little bit greater than a lot of people. Um, or sorry, uh, the slow pacing. I love the slow build because it makes the payoff so much better. It, it just um, felt like it took too long to get onto its feet. That's fair. I think they really wanted you to get in the state of mind of where Danny was at versus him eight years later. Um, because then when he breaks and he, he picks up the alcohol yeah. and he's about to drink it, it makes that so much more of a powerful moment. I agree with that. But I think they also hit it hit it too hard and i think like i said there could have been like 20 minutes cut it would have been fine yeah i mean uh do 90 minute movies not exist anymore <laughs> but then again if it was 90 minutes maybe we'd be like i want more i want I more think, how long so, is 90 minutes is that an hour and a half you said two hours and 20 minutes the movie was two hours 20 yeah how long is 90 minutes 90 minutes is an hour and a half that would have been too short yes i think two hours would have been like perfect i when, when i think i guess when i think of movies i think hour and a half i know that's not the case for typically good movies like comedies, cheap horror movies, they're typically 88, 90 some minutes. Uh, it was, there were definitely slow moments, but I think it paid off in the value of the film and, and Ewan McGregor's Danny, you know, his character. Um, so what did you rate it? I give it a three. I give it a four. So that's a score of seven. So we're at 15. Acting. Acting. All right. So it, it was fine. It was fine. Um, the little girl did a good job. You, I thought you McGregor killed it. I love him. Maybe I'm biased. Like you guys, I don't know if you know. I don't really, I don't really drive on this. I'm a big Star Wars fan. Big, big Star Wars fans. I grew up during the prequels, so that's kind of like my nostalgia. I love you McGregor, Obi Wan. There, there was no like, like I think you McGregor killed it. There were definitely moments his American accent was slipping a little bit. I don't. Did you catch that at all? No. Yeah, his American accent slipped a little bit here and there, but you know that it is what it is. I thought the child's acting was really good. I mean, nobody really pulled me out of the scene. Even the father, like, his intensity was good. One moment I point to that I thought was really good was, and this, I won't give the context, so it's not a spoiler, but the little girl that has the shining quality channeled Ewan McGregor, his yeah. Danny character. That was really good. It was really good because there were two things. The way she was talking and the the way she said the words. Like, it she wasn't... changed cadence and she changed... Um, yes. T- uh, tone. So... I give her a lot of credit for that because she was young, like probably what twelve or thirteen. Yeah, maybe younger. I don't. I don't really know. I guess. Uh, I, I guess, guess she could have been older. And cast, maybe I she guess be fourteen. 15. Okay. Nobody's acting took me out of it, but I don't think anybody's going to get an Oscar. So I, I thought it was fine. So, but that moment in particular, I was kind of like, oh. And you and McGregor following him was great. Can I tell you? Yes. I don't really agree with that. Okay. I thought the acting was very good. Oh really? I thought it was actually superb. I, I wrote down. Um, I, I got lost in this movie. Yeah. So I got lost in the actual acting. It wasn't the plot that really killed me or killed me. <laughs> it wasn't the plot that like drove me in. I thought the acting was very good. I don't I, like even uh, minor characters I thought were very good to me as well. This one is tough for me to decide because obviously it's about Danny, but it's not in, it's not entirely about Danny. And is like I would almost consider this more of a narrative driven than character driven. Yeah. Um, it's more, I think it's more plot than it is like, font, like a character for a character, like I a joke or joke. Walking Phoenix is on the, like that's Char- a character driven. Yeah. So for me, I got lost because when you say you got lost in it, I was like, well, I did too. Did I did for this. I think I got lost in it. I liked the characters. I liked the portrayals. I, th- I mean, I really thought it was fine. I did. I did get lost in it as well, but I don't think anybody like over the top, like, well, you- that's what I think about too. They were, they felt like true portrayals of people in a situation where this could be happening to them. That's true. But do, that, do you think anybody had to push themselves to the limits as an actor for the, these roles or these moments? Yeah, I do. Actually, okay. I think the little girl might might have been pushed really hard. I think, as far as I know, 
Obi Wan doesn't have a drinking problem, <laughs> but he did really well. In no, that you role. Ewan is a very very good actor. And in Rose the Hat, she had a really good moment where her bad stuff was happening to her cult. Yeah, and you could see it physically happening to her. Yeah, I mean that was really good. I was gonna say all the villains were really good. Yeah, I, I, one might say fine, like no. Luigi's Pizza. <laughs> no, I don't think so. All right, so do you have any other points on acting? No, I don't. I, 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 I express myself pretty well. Okay, so what do you give it? I give it a five. I give it a three. All right. Which is a score of eight, so we're at 23. Cinematography. Okay, so it was a nice, nicely shot film, in my opinion. I actually liked how jarring the beginning was. I did too. Yeah, I liked, I, I liked it too. I like the jarring, like kind of showing his drinking and like kind of lack of frame i like i like how they handled ghost situations because they felt like it was hard to tell whether sometimes he was talking to somebody real or not and it was kind of jarring in that sense as well and they kind of popped up out of nowhere they do some interest because i mean when you consider the shining quality it is like it's it's like it's almost like another dimension so to speak and they do some really, really cool stuff with showing them travel to d- different locations. I'm yes. thinking of Rosa Hat specifically, finding the little girl. Oh, the flying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, there, there, are, some, there are some shots like that. Okay, so there's, I think there's two different things. There's those shots, which are really cool, and they show, like, how pretty it is and, like, what they can do. And they're kind of flexing a little bit. But then also, like, if you think about the very ending, like, with the snow and, like, backing up and seeing kind of this ominous building. which That I was awesome. Yeah, like that was done so well. And then like, you know, you'll see the lights coming up the mountain when she's coming and seeing that in the distance. And like, th- I thought there were a lot of really good camera choices. And this is also something else I really love. And they did it. I think they did it because the original Shining followed this uh, same way of, of filming. And I want horror films to take note. Maybe me being in 2019, this is why I didn't feel as scary. No, no jump scares. Like, there were moments that were startling. There were startling yeah. moments, but there were no loud noise, image in your face, jump scare. Right. They didn't do any of that. And I applaud this movie for that 100%. So that's my take on the cinematography. I really like the wide sweeping shots they had. Like, there was this one shot and they're like, uh, you're like, that's Ohio. Yes. I know. I leaned over. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, that is, that is Ohio. Yeah. There are a couple, like, wide shots like that. Revealing the house the girl is with actually the sequence you were just talking about. There was that wide shot with the house. I'm like, God, it's a beautiful house. Yes. The shot with the, there's an homage to the original opening to The Shining. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's such a good shot. The little town city thing was cool too. Like yeah. when they zoom out so you can see like the play town reflected the real town. Yeah, that was that cool. Was, that was cool. The gravity and the chalkboard. The gravity? Yeah, I remember he starts sliding. Oh, oh, that happened a couple times. Yeah. Yeah, I, I channel that under kind of like the flying and stuff like that. Like, yeah. it's just cool. But even like when it comes back down and you see them like a wide shot in the woods and you see Rose the Hat sitting on top of the camper. Like, yeah. those are just pretty cool shots. The beach shot with the great. 15-year-old girl. That was a very good shot. Well, what do you rate it? I give it a four. I give it a five. Nice. I was torn, but I give it a five. Okay, so that is a score of nine. So it is currently at 32. Dialogue. Uh, before we get into this, I just want to say there was this lady in the theater with us. Tell do you remember this? <coughs> oh, it was the scariest part of the movie for me. I don't know. She had this she cough. Picked, she picked the dead moments to do it too. Like there'd be something like suspense, and yeah. you just hear. <coughs> I'm like, oh my god, the fuck is that part of the movie? Yeah, it was. That anyway, was, yes, dialogue. So uh, the speaking to each other. I thought it was it was average. Yes, but there were a couple lines that stuck out to me still too, though. Like what? Um, I wrote them down. Uh, they're mostly, the, the two I have were from Dick. Okay. The, the. Yes. Dead guy. Yes. And first he said, he was describing the cult as, uh, empty demons. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's a good descriptor. Mm-hmm. And he also said, this is the last dream where he said it wasn't coming back. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, that's, it was a nice imagery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, his character did a good job, like kind of filling things in. Yeah, I mean the dialogue isn't gonna be what you remember the movie for. It's no, gonna be the image, sequences. It's gonna be like callbacks to the original Shining, like getting some type of you get resolution. Like it, like it's been thirty, forty years since the Shining, and if you didn't see, if you didn't read the book, and you loved that movie, it's kind of like what happened to Danny? What happened to Danny? His mom? You get that. 
that's going to be what you remember. There will be like visual moments, the shining and the steam and stuff like that, and then resolution. I don't think it's necessarily going to be dialogue. Now, did the dialogue take you or me out? Well, I can't speak for you. It didn't take me out no, at all. not me. There were definitely some really cool moments. Um, oh, what? Here's a good one. Oh, gosh. Man. Um, eat well, live long. Yeah. That was a cool, that's a cool line. Yeah, yeah. Rose the hat when they're called eat well, live long. Mm -hmm. I like that. And that can mean multiple things for like kind of the ghosts and for Danny and for them. And I, I, it was kind of like an all encompassing moment. It wasn't just the dialogue, but at the end when they're at the final location and it's snowy and they're waiting for Rose the hat to catch up to him. And She's like, "What? Well, you're not gonna wait out here with me?" And he's like, "No, I gotta wake it up." Yeah, like, that was that's kind of like, a, ooh, like, ah, like you, you're just ready. You're like, you, probably the. This is one of the best moments of going back to an original spot that I can remember since I played Metal Gear Solid Four, and you go back to where the first game took place with better graphics, like that. It, I think it maybe that makes a connection in my head because it's also snowy, Shadow mm-hmm. Moses, but it's just kind of like that. Oh, we're gonna see it again. Like that, that yeah. feeling. It's so uh, yeah, good. I, I had that feeling at the end of Harry Potter where he has his kids and he goes back to yeah. platform nine and three quarters. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. So I think the dialogue was fine. I was never taking out, taken out of the movie because of it, but it's not going to be what I think this movie is known for, which is fine. It doesn't have to be. What do you hit? I hit three. Three. Okay. So that's six. So that means that Dr. Sleep has a score of 38, which I'm not, I don't have it in front of me, but I'm going to guess that's Michael Jordan. Was it 38? 38. Is that Michael yes. Jordan? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Michael Jordan. But nothing wrong with Michael Jordan. It no. was a good movie. It was a good, good movie. I, I enjoyed recommend it. seeing it. Yeah, you guys should go see it. There it was, was a really good action, action sequence we didn't touch on because it's too spoilery. Yeah. But I love that part. I, th- I think we've gotten better at kind of describing the movies without spoilers. There might be some stuff <laughs> about the ending that, like... We have I, to be vague. I think in the trailers, you see some of the ending anyway, so I don't feel too bad about what we're doing. And we're I didn't watch the trailers, actually. No? No. Nope. Okay. Oh, and blind. Nice. Yeah. So that is our review of Dr. Sleep. So that's our episode for the week. That's a review of Dr. Sleep. Imperfect rhyme, by the way, right there. Um, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you fit this episode in before the Browns and the Sealers play. Or uh, put it on the background. Yeah, yeah, use the, you can see the yeah, score, I you think, know what's going on. Maybe, I think it's Monday night, but there's a dude called, I'm not making this up, Booger McFarlane. Ah. He's a terrible, terrible, I think he's Monday night, but God, he's a terrible Ooh. announcer. Like, terrible play-by-play. Hate him. Probably a good dude. Don't like him talking during my games. Um. So, yeah, that's that's our review. Hope you guys enjoy the show, as always. Please leave a five-star review in the thing, and, you know, just say that you like the show. Yep, another thing. Or don't. Just say something. You can five-star review us. You can leave us a review on Facebook or uh, you can comment on our social posts. But the main and most important thing to make sure you never miss an episode is subscribe. If you are listening to us on Spotify or Google Play or Stitcher or Apple or Podbean, the easiest way to make sure you never miss an episode is to subscribe. And it means the world to us. So if you don't want to leave a review yet, that's fine. If you want to wait to get your opinion, your thoughts together, that's fine. But subscribing... Is probably the most important thing, and it means a lot to us, and we see it every week. And thank you for the people that have subscribed, because we see you. So, uh, yeah. thank you guys for listening, and as always, this is the segue. It's the best thing to happen to you on a Thursday. So, you? Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs>